Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at all available Vanny audio logs found within Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. These audio logs appear on CDs dotted about the pizzeria, and discoverable in key locations only viewable when we ride around inside Freddy. After collecting up each and every recording, we must find a secret room in the basement area of the facility. This area is only accessible during the end game, after upgrading Freddy with both Monty's claws and Chica's voice box. You'll discover a secret room behind this wall. The faint sound of a Freddy and Friends theme song can be heard. If we use the Fazcam to take a picture of this wall, a tiny door appears and on the other side we discover a very familiar looking room. Yes, that's right, this is the very same room our hapless hero Michael Afton reclined within each night after a hard shift at the sister location, complete with a TV, popcorn and those exotic butters. But this room also contains a CD player, and by interacting with this device, those mysterious retro CDs can be played, and Vanessa's fascinating backstory is revealed. In this video, we listen to each and every audio CD of the 14 currently available, and after each one, I'll conduct a quick analysis and give my personal thoughts. Think of this as the Story Explained video for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach ahead of the actual Story Explained video's release. But before we begin, it should also be noted that these recordings take place between Vanessa and her therapist. Despite it seeming as though the therapist is speaking to two different people at points, she is in fact, at least in my opinion, speaking to just one, Vanessa but this therapist will speak differently depending on which of the split personalities she is addressing. This is common practice for therapists. If someone has a split personality resulting from trauma, their doctor will address the person differently depending on which personality they are dealing with in that moment. So to clear up any confusion, I will label at the top left of the screen if the recording pertains to Vanessa or Vanny. With that disclaimer out of the way, sit back, relax, and let's listen to Vanessa's tragic tale. Hello Vanessa, how are you feeling today? You look a little tired. Hmm, well, it's been a while since we last spoke. How's your anxiety been? You did so well with your calming protocols when we first worked together. Are you still using those? Yes? Okay, good. Well, now I understand there's a new issue. It came on just recently, rather suddenly. Can you tell me about it? What issue? I've been doing my job. I come in and sit at my desk and do my work. Yes, yes, of course you do. Your performance reviews are good. But a routine check of your online history has revealed that you've spent quite a bit of time with someone in an encrypted conversation. We have transcripts, and I've read them. But it's not clear what you're talking about in these conversations. I can't make sense of it. You must be getting something from these that I'm not getting, right? Who are you talking to in these? No one! Sometimes I talk with Lewis. He's in the marketing department. He's nice, I guess. Yes, I see Lewis here. But there's someone else. This recording explains that Vanessa suffers from anxiety and takes medication to calm herself. She works for Fazbear Entertainment in the IT department. We already knew this, as she mentions a character called Lewis, and this ties her directly to the emails featured in the FNAF AR mobile game Special Delivery. This first recording also explains that Vanessa is having conversations over company email with someone, but they are encrypted in a way so that only she can make sense of them. Good morning. Isn't it a pretty day? No? What's the matter? Oh, right. Too bright. I'll pull the shades. Better? 
When the shade's pulled, it feels like we're in a cubbyhole or a cave. Yeah? Hmm. So you're not talking to me again today. <sighs> this isn't all that productive, you know. Don't you think the sessions are more successful when you talk to me? You know, everyone associated with this company gets performance reviews, right? When my sessions don't get results, my reviews aren't very good. If you don't want to talk for your own sake, how about for mine? You don't want me to get in trouble, do you? I could be put in the corner for a time out. Yeah, you think that's funny, huh? This recording is from the perspective of Vanny, the dark, corrupted side of Vanessa who enjoys to live in darkness as a result of the entity inhabiting her mind. Notice also how she laughs cruelly at her therapist's misfortune. It also tells us that the therapist and these sessions are provided by Vanessa's employer, Fazbear Entertainment, who are concerned about her performance on the job, mostly due to her interactions with the mysterious emailer sending those encrypted messages. Hi, go ahead, sit down. I don't know you. What happened to... Oh, we'll get to know each other in no time. I've read through all your files, so I feel like we've been talking for weeks. I feel like I know your dad, too. Bill, right? Your dad's name was Bill? I'm sorry, what did you say? I try to do what I'm supposed to do. I know you do. Your supervisor notes that you follow instructions perfectly. Your dad made you follow instructions, didn't he? I'm talking about the custody battle between your mum and your dad. Your dad didn't play fair, did he? He used to make your mum look bad in court. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Do you want to talk about how that felt? I suppose I don't need you to tell me it felt bad to have a parent scare you into saying things that weren't true. He manipulated you. It wasn't your fault. It's really sad. But it's common for one parent to use their child to hurt the other parent. I know your mum... after she lost the custody case. I was supposed to be a good girl. What happened to her had nothing to do with you. Even though it was your testimony that did it, was that testimony true? No, I didn't think so. But your dad is to blame, not you. Vanessa has now been assigned a new, stricter sounding therapist. This recording explains the origins of Vanessa's psychological damage. How Vanessa's horrible father forced her to lie about her mother in a custody battle, which led to her mother taking her own life. Vanessa blamed herself as a child and was scarred for life. You're not going to talk to me? No? What's the problem? Oh, the flowers? Yes, these are particularly fragrant today, aren't they? I'll move them. <laughs> there. Now, let's see. What are you looking at? You're amazingly alert, aren't you? All right, well, I'd like to have you tell me about yourself. But I can see that you're not going to do that. Or are you? All right then. If you aren't going to talk to me, I'll just go by these notes. You just sit there and be comfy. Or not. That chair doesn't really fit you, does it? Well... This won't take long. Let's see. Your previous counsellor is no longer available. Does that bother you? No? You don't look surprised to see me sitting here instead of your last therapist. Well, then, let's get to it. I'll admit that some of what's in your file is a little surprising. Overall, you don't come across as a troublemaker. But if you read between the lines... It's clear that you have a little rebellious side, right? And I'm surprised by your knowledge of computers. You're something of a phenom. Do you know what that word means? It means you have unusual skill. 
like a hacker. I assume you know what a hacker is. Yes? Do you think of yourself as a hacker? This alludes to Vanessa's other personality, the Vanny side, a more confident and intense persona. She has amazing hacking skills, good with computer programming, and of course this comes as a result of the influence Glitchtrap has over her. It is believed Glitchtrap is the digital incarnation of William Afton, and Afton was a robotics engineer. With advanced knowledge on subjects such as hacking, Afton could pass down this information directly to his new disciple Vanny to aid in his rebirth. Good morning, Vanessa. Let's jump right in, shall we? I got a message last night about you, and I have to be honest, it was upsetting. Apparently, the IT department has put together a pretty lengthy report chronicling non-job-related communications that have been coming to your computer. The fact that you're still doing something obviously not work-related on the job is disturbing enough, but what bothers me about what I read is that the messages you're getting seem very manipulative in nature. Do you know who I'm talking about? I get a lot of messages from friends. I like when Lewis writes to me, he's funny. I'm not talking about Lewis. You know who I'm talking about. Why won't you open up about it? <sighs> what you might not know is that this person who's been sending you messages has been hacking into your personal files too. These are the same files I have here. These files are full of details about your life. Do you know what that means? I'm not in the tech department. I just type on the computers. I know that. But what matters here is that this person who is contacting you knows a lot about you. Lots of people know more than I do. Sometimes I need to listen. Vanessa is getting work emails from a mysterious sender. This sender is manipulative and accessing Vanessa's private data using sensitive information to manipulate her more easily. Using all the information we have brings us to one logical conclusion, that this mystery email account belongs to Glitchtrap. He is manipulating Vanessa into stealing Fazbear Company secrets and worse. Good morning, it's good to meet you. I've read your file, so I'm up to speed on what you and your previous therapists have worked on. Sure, you can have a candy. I'll have one too. You look chill sitting there like that. Not a care in the world, huh? All right, well, I'd like to start by talking about your parents. What happened to them and you it was tragic. But when I look through the notes, I didn't get a sense that you've processed that emotionally. When I read your account of what happened, it came across as, well, more of an objective rather than a subjective narrative. Oh, sorry. You don't know what that means, do you? What I mean is that the way you told the story is more like you were reading something from a book than you were talking about your own past. That makes me think you've cut yourself off from it. Is that right? Not sure? Well, I see in your file that you spend a lot of time by yourself and are good at self-dialogue. You know what I mean? Asking yourself questions and getting answers. So maybe you should ask yourself how you really feel about your past. Maybe you should give yourself a chance to really look at what happened and let yourself be upset about it so you can let it go. Vanessa is now on her third therapist and back in Vanny mode, calm and collected. Another clue that this is the Vanny side of her split personality is signposted by the fact she retells events like they were from a book. Therefore, she represents the detached and controlled side of Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Would you like a candy? Butterscotch today. No, thank you. Those have 35 calories apiece. Hmm. Well, they taste good to me. 
Okay. I thought we could do something today that will help us get to know one another better. It looks like you've never taken an inkblot test, right? No? Okay. Then I'm going to show you some ink blots, like this one. And I want you to tell me the first thing it makes you think of. Here we go. What do you see here? A treehouse. Hmm, it does look sort of like a treehouse, doesn't it? Do you like treehouses? I like to sit outside and read. That's good. Now, what about this one? A beetle. Really? Looks like a face to me. That's very interesting. While Vanny likes candy, her real personality Vanessa does not. They may look like the same person, but as Vanny is essentially only Vanessa in body, their actions vary wildly depending on who the therapist is speaking with. This recording also shows Vanessa has a pessimistic view, as revealed by her answers to the ink blot test. Have you thought more about what we talked about? In our last session, you told me you were sad and scared about what happened to you. I suggested you write down exactly what made you so sad and scared. Did you do that? You know, I work with people of all ages, from little kids to the very elderly, and everyone reacts to tragedy differently. Tragedy always leads to a feeling of loss. It's a hole that feels funny, right? Yeah, so if you could process those feelings, how do you think it would affect your fantasies? Would you keep them in the way they are? Recording 8 once again tells us Vanessa is sad and scared because of her abusive childhood. She frequently escapes into fantasy, and her eagerness to escape reality is likely one of the reasons Glitchtrap found Vanessa so easy to control and manipulate. What are you doing? Oh, you like those? I do too. They smell so sweet, don't they? Apparently, the janitor on this floor has a garden and has been putting bouquets in the offices here for years. Do you ever grow things? No? I work a lot. I know you do. Maybe more than you should. More free time would do you good. Do you have a hobby? No? Perhaps we could find one for you. Like a sport. No? Hmm. I have a craft space in my basement. Maybe I could come up with something you could learn to do. I don't like dark basements. Let's break down audio log 9. Vanessa likes flowers while her alter ego Vanny hated the smell of them, probably because Vanny contains the personality of Glitchtrap, an evil entity. Meanwhile, Vanessa hates dark basements and this may allude to her disturbing childhood. Perhaps her father locked her in a dark basement himself. It could also refer to the basement area she stayed in as Vanny while resurrecting Glitchtrap in the old pizzeria. The work she refers to is likely the work she performs while under Glitchtrap's control, so she would wish to stay out of places such as this whenever regaining control. I'd say make yourself comfortable, but I think you already are. It looks like you could take a nap. That's a nice chair, isn't it? According to these message logs, you've been working pretty late over the last couple of weeks. Or not working. Are you ready to talk about who you're interacting with? From what I can see here, the interaction is getting more serious. Is it distracting you from your work? My work is important. There's a non-disclosure agreement. This is Vanny again. When Vanny speaks, she sounds more like a puppet, very robotic, and shuts down all talk about her email conversations with Glitchtrap quickly and clinically. We also know this is Vanny because she is said to look relaxed. Vanessa is the opposite, nervous and on edge. Good morning, Vanessa. Well, I can't blame you for looking out the window instead of listening to me. It's a gorgeous day, isn't it? I like the blue sky. Hmm, so do I. Now, 
Let's see what we can get done on this nice sunny day. Okay, here we go. I know part of your job requires you to do online searches, but a routine audit of your search history has revealed that you're doing a little private searching on company time. Is that right? I get breaks. That's true. So, on your breaks, it looks like you were shopping for a costume. You purchased some fake fur material. What are you going to make? What was that? Did you say the costume is a secret? Why is that? I can't talk about this. He said he would always be watching. He could be here or there or anywhere in between. Are you talking about your dad? Have those feelings come up again? I hate sounding like a broken record, but this is something you really need to resolve if you're ever going to be happy. I have. I compartmentalized him. He's locked away. No, that's not what I mean. You can't just ignore an issue. You have to face your memory of the experiences and process them so you can let it go so you don't get triggered anymore. You can use a sort of self-dialogue to release these things. I don't like doing that. Hmm. Well, okay. We'll get back to that. I'd really like to know something about this costume. What's it for? In this recording, we hear Vanny and Vanessa fighting internally with one another. The calm tones of Vanny and the more nervous realities of Vanessa bleed over into one conversation when they are pressed about the rabbit costume they just ordered. While the therapist believes Vanessa is being tormented and watched by memories of her father, it is in fact glitch trap Vanessa is referring to. He has a hold over her and has scared her into submission. I understand you'll be transferring to a different location soon. I'll be sorry to see you go. I think we've been making progress, don't you? You can request to come back and speak with me more on your own time though. Did you know that? Our sessions don't have to be company mandated. I have all sorts of clients, Vanessa. I don't just work with corporations. I work with individuals and small groups. I even work in schools. I'm wherever I'm needed. I'm needed somewhere else now. Thank you. In recording 12, we discover that Vanessa is moving locations, transferring from her time working for Fazbear Entertainment on their special delivery initiative to a role near the newly constructed Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, a location built above the FNAF 6 pizzeria where it will become possible to resurrect William Afton and return him to a physical form. This is Glitchtrap's endgame plan. When I'm getting to know a new client, I like to start by finding out directly from them what they like to do. How do you spend all the time you have? Nothing. Well, how do you feel about sports? You like sports? Yeah? No? Oh, I get it. You like to watch them, but not play them. You like being inside, don't you? I get that. Lots of weird stuff outdoors, isn't there? Yeah, I understand. Well, I hate to do this right off the bat, but I've been directed to ask you about this. Apparently, I'm the fourth therapist you've had. And apparently, all three of your former therapists have gone missing. Or, two of them are missing. I don't want to scare you, but I have to tell you that one of them was found dead. That doesn't seem to upset you. Well, then I guess I'll go ahead and tell you that the woman's body was pretty messed up. It looked like it was mangled by machinery. That doesn't bother you either? Hmm. It's all pretty strange, I think. I'm not clear on the circumstances. Apparently the police don't have any evidence. How does all of this make you feel? Maybe I should be watching my back. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Okay, shall we move on to something lighter? Recording 13 is where things begin to get very creepy. 
Assigned a fourth therapist at the new Fazbear location, this one-way conversation is directed toward the Vanny side of Vanessa's split personality. She is informed her previous therapists have gone missing, that one was even killed and mangled by machinery. This was almost certainly Vanny's doing. Under the control of Glitchtrap and using the Special Delivery Initiative, she sent killer animatronics to the homes of her former therapists, much like FNAF AR players experienced themselves. It's all very meta. Afton didn't want anyone interfering with his plans and attempting to cure Vanessa's mental state, a mind he worked so very hard to corrupt. Do you know a place called Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex? I'll take your silence as a yes. And besides, I know you know it. Because the technicians who work for Pizzaplex know you. Or rather, I guess it would be better to say that they think they do. They report that they've caught you on camera, or at least it appears to be you. Nothing to say about that? Well, the techs are convinced that you've hacked into their system many times. Although, I'll admit I don't see any proof here. Seems like they have more of a gut feeling than fact. But apparently, the hacks are causing all kinds of problems. Hmm. <laughs> you get a kick out of that? The idea of techs running around like chickens with their heads cut off? <laughs> yeah, that's a funny image, isn't it? But seriously, I have to say that I think it's weird that you'd spend so much time in such a busy, social place. You seem like more of a loner to me. Lots of time by yourself instead of with friends. Lots of time talking to yourself. Right? Is it the electronics you like? I saw in your file that you have developed software programs that talk to you and repeat phrases. Right? The program asks you questions and prompts you for responses. It's kind of like your own self-therapy, isn't it? Another way of talking to yourself to work things out, right? When I saw some of your recent encrypted conversation logs, that's what I thought I was looking at. It felt like I was watching someone go back and forth in their own head. But the text found something that's different than that. When I read what they found, at first, I thought I was looking at more examples of you just talking with yourself. Then I realized it was different. When I study this, it sounds like there is someone else responding to you. Who is it? In this final recording, it is established that Vanessa does not actually work at the Mega Pizzaplex. This explains why we see her creating secret rooms around the facility. It is from these rooms she hacked Fazbear's security systems and caused all kinds of problems. Fazbear Entertainment continued to monitor her online activity and discovered Vanessa had created technology where she could speak to a computer program and it would actually respond as if it were a living sentient being. This is, of course, because she was in fact creating a program to interact directly with Glitchtrap, to follow his instructions and return Afton to an animatronic shell. We see this occur during the secret Afton ending. Once again, the therapist is speaking with Vanny in this recording. For now, this is where the audio logs end. Unfortunately, the final two recordings are unobtainable at this time due to a glitch, which is pretty ironic considering the game's subject matter. Even still, we have a fair idea of what Vanessa and by extension her alter ego Vanny were up to, and the events which led to her mind becoming susceptible to Glitchtrap's control. I hope this video has made the story a little clearer and easier to understand, and if not, don't worry as I will be looking at each ending in depth in an upcoming video to fully elaborate on events. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave me a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.